no one likes to write on the walls. So it's real battle just trying to keep all the pens and markers away from his reach. Some of the behaviors with the children are because they're bored. They're not stimulated enough. So you're going to go to time out. And while mom just ignores the bad behavior, dad attempts another half-hearted time out. Hey, you stay in here. Two minutes. Ted actually put him in his room and then closed the door and held the door firm so he couldn't get out. Your spot for time out is their room. Yes. Only if you stand there and hold the door. Oh, yeah. <laughs> My first thoughts were, OK, what are we doing wrong already? I, I can't really see it. Time out's not about somebody holding the door closed while you play in your room for two minutes. That was just keeping your child captive in his bedroom. Halfway through the day, I noticed Rylan wandering off to the backyard to play. But there's not much to play with. It's no wonder these kids get a little stir-crazy. The backyard was just barren. There was nothing in it. There was nothing to play with or do. It wasn't very appealing. After Ryland gave up playing outside, he moved inside with the rest of the family. Put your feet down. No, no, Please. No. I asked you nicely. But it isn't long before I notice something very alarming. I don't know where two children are. <laughs> I was concerned, but they weren't. They disappeared? Yeah. Roland? Ryland? I don't know the first thing about boys, and I just cannot chase them down with all the rest of the kids in the house. Guys, can you come in, please? Yeah. Wow. You're making Nanny nervous, do you know that? What are you guys doing outside? Did you open the door? When I'm looking at Jessica, I think she's like a walking coma. She's like somebody who's not there, but they are moving around. I want to see how you open it. Safety is a huge problem in the Kramer house. They're being cavalier and, and very complacent about the welfare of their children. And later, as dinner approached, Mum was busy with the baby. Hey, Rye, do you want to check and see if the water's boiling yet for me? So she tried to enlist Ryland to help with the cooking. Thank you. There was some boiling water on the stove, and Mum asked Brevin if he could go and check on it. That is boiling! He's only six. I have so many things I need to get done. I'm a stressed out mom. OK, put that much into the boiling water. I was shocked when I saw Brevin pouring the noodles into the boiling water. Oh, man, it's a flood! I kept a close eye on Brevin since no one else was. It's dangerous for any child unsupervised. And as the family sat down for dinner, things didn't improve any. Nolan! Nolan, put it down and use your fork. Nolan. The boys' table manners were atrocious, but Mom and Dad were oblivious. I want to find treasure. There's no treasure in there. Nolan likes to eat with his hands, and he likes to smear it all over like paint. Can you use your fork? It was killing me. It was so painful to watch Ted and, and Jessica just flounder. No one, no one, stop. It's been quite a day, but I hadn't seen anything until I saw bedtime. The bedtime in the Kramer house is probably one of the most creative but crazy bedtimes I've ever come across in 17 years. OK, you guys want to play a little game? Yeah. OK, count how many cars that go past you, OK? Bedtime actually entails taking them out in the minivan and driving them around until they fall asleep. OK, start counting. When they're at a point where we think that they just need to settle down a little bit, then we'll put them in the van and drive them around. Nolan, tired? Are you? Just close your eyes then. Oh, Nolan's sleeping. Once the kids had fallen asleep, Ted carries them into their rooms one by one and puts them to bed, without brushing their teeth, giving them a bath, or even changing their clothes. I've seen enough. It's time to sit these parents down for a serious talk. I hope they're ready for what I have to tell them. The first thing that really, really concerns me is bedtime. 
it's painful to watch you spend all that time in a car when you could have spent that winding them down and putting them to bed. I'm stopping that now. Fuck. <laughs> What's okay? I'm up for the challenge. That's the only thing way. that you know has worked. Yes. Right. You've done things in the short term that are killing you in the long term. Driving that minivan in the short term fixed it, but are you going to do that till they're 18? Yeah, I guess I never really thought of that. You've got into these bad habits that have to be fixed. Before your children can change their attitude, you absolutely have to change yours. I'm very skeptical about them just going to bed and not having the van ride. Once given the tools, you can do it. But right now, what I've observed is that there is a serious lack of discipline in this house. I don't agree with that. Your kids are in control. No one turn the TV off. Turn it off. Yeah, hey, stay away from there. Stay away from the TV. Brevin, I'm going to unplug it. And what concerns me even more is the safety of the kids. In my estimation, you place your children in danger. When you turn your back for a split second, you don't know where they are. One second, because okay. I don't know where two children are. <laughs> me neither. They disappeared? I was shocked because I feel that they are pretty safe for the most part. You've lulled yourselves into this false sense of security. And I don't want you to be concerned about your children playing out. But they're not playing out. They've escaped. It's not an accident waiting to happen. It's a catastrophe. It makes me feel like a terrible mom. We have always had the highest concern for safety. I really had no clue what to think. In, in good faith, I can't just stand around and, and watch you guys keep floundering. It is not going to be easy. I know that I am not the perfect parent, but I don't think there's one right way to do everything. But you've just let things get to this really bad place of being habitual, but they're not safe. I definitely did not expect that at all. It, very, it really scared me. After yesterday's observations, my concerns with the Kramers are crystal clear. Hey, everybody. Hello. Good Hello. morning. Mom is clueless about safety, and Dad is always taking the easy way out. This is the fun part. This is where we all get to work together as a team. It was time to give the Kramers a new set of rules. Do you know about this big red book that I have? It has rules. Oh, come on. <laughs> We're just doing everything by the seat of our pants. The first one is respect each other and your home. He's running on the wall. Do you think you guys respect your home when you're scribbling on the walls? You do? No. Can't write on the walls anymore. And you've got to be nice to each other. I didn't think it's going to work. All habits are very hard to break. The second rule is bedrooms are for bedtime. OK, minivans aren't for bedtime. I know, I know Dad's looking at me like he wants me to shrivel up. I was kind of like, well, if it works, why do we got to break it? Next, time out means time out. Right there. It is probably good to be firm, but I don't want to be mean. The final rule is safety first. Be no more running down the street and not knowing where you guys are and doing things that aren't so safe. Safety was the most important issue. I, I can't really see it. How do you get outside? I consider our house a safe home for our family, but I wouldn't consider it a safe home for other families. OK, what else do I have? This is the reward board. Do you get rewards in school? Do you get stars at school when you do things well? These are the things that we're going to work on initially. Listen and respond. Good table manners. I like the reward board. They know if they get a lot of stars, then they're going to be able to get a reward. Asking permission. The big ask permission is to go outside, all right? We've got to start the day. We're going to get some stuff organized, yeah? Sticking with all these rules and everything, we're thinking, well, how long is this going to last? After giving the family the new rules, I wanted to put the reward board to immediate use by having the kids clean up. Did you do that? 
No way. We're doing a very good job of getting organized. We want them to put their all their toys away so we have it nice and neat. And that way it allows Jessica a little bit more time where we don't have to go up and pick up after them. I'm giving you one, two, three. Good job. And after we'd finished tidying up the house, I had another project for the boys. I need you upstairs for a minute. I've got a project for us to do. The kids don't have any respect for the house or for their parents. I wanted to find a space where they could actually go and be creative as opposed to scribbling on walls. OK, you see this? Scribbling? Yeah. It's not allowed. It's only going to be allowed on this wall. OK. So this, this is paint. And when it dries, you can chalk all over it. We we'll dip it in here. Can you do that? Can you roll? There you go. Nolan, you can't scribble anywhere else in the house, OK? Good job. I'm looking forward to getting rid of all the marks and start fresh, and hopefully it'll make them more creative. The boys were so enthusiastic about the chalkboard wall, especially Nolan. Are you having fun, Nolan? I think writing on any other walls is history. <laughs> Later in the day, I wanted to give Mom and Dad a unique tool to keep track of the kids. The first thing I'm going to show you is the giggle bug. All right, press the button. OK. This is your remote. When you don't know where they are, you press this. OK. But they try and take it off. That's awesome. I like that. <laughs> That's more for in the house. It was just so neat to see tools I had never known existed. There's no way the boys are going to escape our house now. Although this will not solve all of the safety problems, it's a start. Can you come upstairs for a minute? Now, another surprise to stop the dangerous outdoor escapes. So I've got you something that's outside, but it's in the garden, and you don't have to run out on the street to play with it, OK? Would you like to see it? Yeah. OK. Out you go. It was a trampoline for the back garden. Look at that, guys. Do you want to try it? Yeah. And what do you tell Nanny Stella? Thank you. You're welcome. It was apparatus to keep the kids occupied, but keep them safe at the same time. Ooh, oh, cool, cool guys. Oh. Yay! Oh. Can you come on it with us? I knew you were going to ask me that. <laughs> See how high you can go. See how high you can go. How high... Whoa, that's high, Brevin. OK, here I go. This trampoline will help these kids burn off some energy. Yeah. <laughs> Have fun, boys. I wanted to see if Mom and Dad could keep an eye on the boys without me 